Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to fifth session. Uh, this session uh, has a is a thematic session. Uh, it's about quantum ecosystems and education. Uh, we are kind of lucky to have uh, enough talks uh, on this session. Uh, so we will start with education part and then uh, we end uh, with some more generic, uh, let's say, ecosystem part. So uh, the first talk uh, will be delivered by Daria and Laura from Finland. Uh, they already organized uh, two, several hackathons on uh, quantum games, uh, quantum jam, sorry, it's not hackathon. Uh, and also uh, due to COVID, they also start to teach online uh, quantum games lectures. And first time they also open it to internationally. Uh, they already told that it was like finished yesterday and now they will share uh, their experience. Uh, so I will uh, give uh, stage to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yes. So our topic is the course, which is called Quantum Games course, and it is in Aldo University. That's why we have Aldo Quantum Games in the name. Yes, so um, uh, my name is Laura Biesbonen. It's nice to see familiar faces here as well. I come from Aldo University. And, and I'm Daria Antila from University of Turku. And this year we together were main teachers of that kind of course and this was first year experience for us being main teachers and Laura has had already experience in following these courses and teaching some lectures as well and we thank you for inviting us to speak about this course and we learned a lot during this course and we are for sure that we can give you also some new thoughts and some maybe new information. Yes, and, and thank you also on my behalf. Again, thank you, Abu, for asking us and inviting us here and Oksana for changing places. So uh, like Daria said, we had our final lecture yesterday and, and are in midst of going through everything that we've, we've gotten from the course, but we are very proud of our students and excited to share our experience. So the point of this course um, for the students uh, was to produce a game which has some connection to quantum physics or an interactive quantum art, for example, or any, any game that is not virtual or, or not on, on computer. So, um, yeah, participants. Students met, yeah, students met their little projects on, on groups. So we grouped them together so that there would be at least someone who knew something about quantum physics and someone who had some experience. It didn't always go like that, but we are going to present this further. There was also mentoring sessions and things like that. Okay, let's move forward. So like the general idea of that kind of concept is that we have kind of two or three months of uh, the course and the meetings are once per week. And first we start with lecture sessions. So once per week we have lectures and then they transform into mentored meetings where participants in teams already, uh, already start doing their games. And the course is meant for participants with different backgrounds. So there can be physics students, quantum technology, quantum mechanics students, students from media, uh, students from game design, even teacher students. And so like programmers, everyone who is interested is also welcome to participate to this course. So like our base point is that kind of zero level is required for this course yeah like we had people from from uh, the history department for example who had no mathematical background for example for for building a game but they still created something and i think this year uh, the youngest participant was something like i don't know 15 16 or something we got yeah, it was a amazing special permit to, to to join us and that was amazing for them to be there so um we guide the students to get knowledge also on their own, but like uh, that's kind of like coming from the game industry. And the idea comes that when you're in the game industry, things change so fast that the things that you've already learned at school or, or, or at uni are already quite, quite old. So we kind of got guide towards that. But in particular, in this year, we wanted to make sure that we got the basics uh, somewhat more right in a sense. 
and yeah. Yeah, yeah and of uh, course this, uh, like it is really individual for everyone. The participation is taking into account how many working hours you use uh, when you are doing this course, how much you participate in your teamwork. So the, from this course, people can get from three up to nine credits. Hmm. Okay. And like I said, there were a couple of iterations before. So 2020 spring was the first time and it was originally thought and planned as a course where we would bring people together from different departments of Aalto University. Because we have kind of like, I think the strongest uh, research in Finland when it comes to quantum technologies. And we have a special bachelor's uh, degree program for quantum technologies in particular. So we wanted to include those people and bring them together with, with our talents from the media department and art departments and, and places like that. So after that, this is uh, the third iteration already. Yeah, and it is, it is good to notice that during the 2020, there was coronavirus. So in the middle of the course, the course were transferred to online and maybe it, it can be seen also from statistics. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Um, so the first year we got only two games. A lot of people, they quit the course when everything changed suddenly and affected many lives in different ways, of course. Uh, so in the end, there were only five participants taking the course. But then next year, we already got like six games with 14 participants. And this year <laughs> for our international edition, um, so we finished with 11 games. I will soon share them. And we got like 27 participants. And Daria, you remember better the people who got here to start with us with the course. Ah, yeah, so this year, like we started with 84 people, but only 27 actually participated into teams and produced some games. But it is OK. We will refer to that issue later as well. Yeah, so not everyone, they already let us know that they weren't there to participate for the games per se. They just wanted to listen and then they uh, they were during the lectures, like following whatever happened. And now like a little sneaky advertisement. We are not sure about the next iteration of the course, but there will be at least a quantum game jam already this September. So mark it on your calendar. So if there are any ways we're going to produce new quantum games this fall. So. September it is, and focus, if nothing else. Yeah. But for the previous years, I can quickly show, show what the game uh, logos look like. Um, so much like in a quantum game jam, the final projects of the course, they are always shared publicly and uh, they are found on the course website. We can share the link later if you're interested. Yeah, let's move forward. Yeah. So we, like, like we already referred, there are some issues in doing that kind of course and especially in iterations before 2022 they were first iterations and just feeling how things go we transferred online and then we continued online so there were a couple of bigger issues one of them is that final games did not connect that much to quantum physics. Like where was the connection to quantum physics? Well, yes, they were inspired by quantum physics, but you know, games can be different. Some can be like better involving quantum physics aspect inside them and some not. Yeah. And also students dropped out and well, quantum physics seemed for students very random and difficult. And it is normal issue, it, it seems, random and difficult also this year for many students. And now we wanted this year to somehow better, uh, to do our course better uh, than these iterations. And so we can show you what were the differences. Yeah, so previous years, the main idea was that we get like a lot of industry visitors to explain like their expertise. And um, the bad thing was that there was only 20 minutes for introductory, both on quantum physics and quantum computing, which is kind of small if you think that you might be uh, developing a game on quantum physics. Uh, tomorrow, uh, yes, tomorrow I'm going to be talking more about what the quantum games are per se and going deeper to that subject, but let's now uh, concentrate quite on like on the educational part, part here. So we wanted to change this weight, so to say, 
and have more weight on the introductory level quantum physics like we call it like a zero level quantum physics yeah. so if you've never heard the word before kind of a quantum physics and then add up something above that so that there'd be interesting parts also the people who are already you know familiar with quantum physics and then again industry visitors um, this is only um, concentrating on the quantum side similarly yeah. we had equal amount of, of these short lectures and talks and presentations on the game development side and, and industry visitors from there yes so yeah these changes what we made they were totally based on the issues that we wanted to do better this year that we wanted somehow yeah to uh, correct and uh this year well now we will show you what what was what was the issue or not the issue with this year <laughs> yeah so the general structure was like I said first we started with lectures and, and on top of that little questionnaires that we didn't have have before just to check basically that they are listening on on our lectures and then after each lecture there was a set of homework and when this was all over, then we changed over to uh, the project work. We helped the uh, teams to form, we helped them to the start, and we had these milestone meetings once a week that the mission was to guide towards developing the game and towards different steps of, of game development, so to say. Yeah, it, it was, is also hmm. worth noticing that homeworks and questionnaires this year were very first time for uh, being on the course. And actually, from feedback, I can tell you right away that people actually liked our homeworks. We will present yeah, that was... <laughs> behind our homeworks. Yes, yes, people were thanking thanking <laughs> us that we gave them homework lessons. But we can talk more about them later. But concentrating on the lectures first, and and again, we're just presenting the quantum side of things. There was equal amount of of game development lectures and and talks. No. But, uh, for the first few lessons, uh, the concentration was more on, on the quantum physics. Yeah, so on the upper row, you see the lecture names uh, about quantum physics from lecture number one, and on the lower row from le lecture number two. And uh, here are very interesting names, uh, for example, but we can show you also how this is related to level zero and second level. So the yellow color is about level zero of quantum concept, and the red color is level two of quantum concept. And uh, quantum hype and quantum beauty are the names of my lectures. When in quantum hype, I explain to people how quantum physics is present in our life like on an uh, imaginary level meaning that we have films where we have words quantum around us we have a uh, quantum uh, sewing machines quantum dishwashers we have quantum i don't know clothes whatever so word quantum is used as a hype so we discussed a lot about it and in quantum beauty i was more i was talking more about uh, philosophical aspects of quantum physics so it was totally level two of quantum physics and this year we also tried to use concepts and presentations which are interesting for students themselves so we used a lot of pictures we used a lot of uh, screenshots we used memes we used uh, very yes. colorful and nice presentations yes and we also this year had some really pristine people visiting us. So <laughs> we have Shaima actually talking tomorrow as well about her projects related to quantum citizen science. So I advise you to listen to that. So she was one of our visitors and then the wonderful Marcel Plathauser uh, from IBM Quantum to introduce us also to procedural quantum generation stuff. But here also I'll show uh, quantum technologies were explained from, again, from a so-called zero level. So we didn't expect them to know anything related. So we wanted to at least try um, um, our best in, in simplifying things without making uh, any room for misconceptions or things like that. And then yes. the last few uh, lectures, uh, we noticed that there's a lot of more room and the weight is more on the game development and less on the quantum. But we wanted to balance these, kind of like intervene them in a nice way. 
And even though you see that quantum misconceptions were referred on lecture five, we also did it throughout the course mm -hmm. because when we gave when when we got the questionnaire responses, we went through them, and on the next lecture we always referred to them. We corrected misconceptions, misunderstandings. We also helped people to to understand better if they had some questions or some issues. Mm -hmm. And similarly, the homework. After each lecture, there was a set of homework that were basically guiding towards self-research in China on either the quantum concepts and quantum computers. And we wanted them to reflect on what they kind of like learned, what were the sources that they used. And and yeah, there was the meme, meme homework, for example, as well. Yeah. Yeah, and these homeworks, they are maybe more related to quantum side of the course, mm -hmm. so to say. And why we had homeworks and why the idea was to see what people learned is especially the issue that quantum physics is hard for people and we wanted to see how they learn. We wanted to help them as much as we can through our uh, our speeches in the beginning of every lecture when we refer to homeworks, to questionnaires mm -hmm. and also throughout the whole course. Yeah. A couple of examples like explore quantum games. We had a created list of quantum games. I'm um, keeping a, a, a list of all quantum related games and there's like over 200 games over there. So we used to create one with a few good educational quantum physics games and other types of games as well. We had them explore their own ideas so that we would already like brainstorm on, on the creative ideas and the creative side of it as early as possible although the weight was on quantum physics in the end. And uh, there are some statistics on how many people actually responded for the homework. So yes. I'd say this was already quite nice that we had so many people who said that, ah, oh, we are not, we're just going to follow, but we still had a lot of responses. So we also wanted to make the homework kind of fun. Yes, and here you can see also how amount of people got a little bit lower, but it is normal always. Yeah, it's, it's normal in, in most of the courses. So. Like I said, after, after the lectures and after the homeworks, we moved into uh, gathering the people in teams, helping them brainstorm ideas, helping them uh, create the structure for the games, how to code. We had mentors helping there. Uh, once a week, we had this meeting from mentors. We had dedicated mentors for each yeah. team so that they would follow the progress and all the other mentors were allowed and, and guided to also comment on them so that we would then make them more and more enthusiastic about their own projects. Yeah. So. And here we start with uh, quantum art, actually. This is the first, uh, first one. And then uh, you 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 will see two examples of uh, actually adventure games, quantum adventure games, which also used uh, quantum computing ideas behind them. They had tasks related to quantum computing, yeah, so, so they, they were educational. Yeah, educational yeah. aspects. Yeah, yeah. The next one is three D game, which uh, is VR actually. Ah, uh, sorry, V yeah, yeah. VR. Sorry. VR game, which is actually pretty rare. Uh, so to say, because it is hard to make. Uh, yeah, and this was actually game. inspired by the the Google uh, Google new quantum game. game. Yeah, where you quantum finding... particles, or I don't yeah. remember. The yeah, again like that. So the team was inspired yeah. by that, and they wanted to make that in three D. The idea is to protect your yeah. your qubit from external like any noise or anything like that. So they just made it three D, and that was yes. pretty amazing. The next okay. game is text-based game, which is also a rarity for quantum games. And then we have quantum horror game, which is also a rarity, so to say, even though they are not the only ones, but with, they are still rarities. Uh, Laura, please show us quantum horror game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from the illustration. Uh, I'm I'm sad I didn't get a, a screenshot of the actual gameplay. It was, it looked really polished, but we'll soon yeah. uh, we'll soon update these games on their course website, and we can share the link as well. So these yeah. were really like really good looking. There will be videos of all of them. So if you're slightly intimidated to start a new gameplay or anything like that, just at least watch the videos. We are so proud of these. Yeah, and then this game was really interesting one because 
everyone memorized that game because the idea of this game was to be educational for kids, but then it went like, you know, like modern art goes. So it went really abstract and really, well, not for kids, so to say, but everyone memorized this game. Yes. <laughs> and then we have games which are based on already existing games. This is the quantum game of life. Then we have quantum paper rock uh rock paper scissors and then we yes. have quantum snake do i have that as well here yeah and here for example for the quantum snake the snake gathers if you have a small screen you might not see but there are like uh, cat vectors here that you're catching and eating and the more you eat of of uh, this other state you know it'll affect uh the, yeah. the superposition of those and you have a desired quantum yeah. state so we can so, say that game yeah. was a success. Uh, games were a success, and also this course were pretty successful. This iteration, yeah. yeah. And also, as I mentioned, that comes from the game industry side. And Anna Kaisa, who was uh, sadly she's on under fever, so she's not here with us, uh, but she has like some almost twenty years of experience from from the game development side and industry side. She wanted to bring this aspect of of learning through doing and sharing information and and reflection on that. So we have these learning legacies that the um, students also share online about what they learned and what they would tell to the others. So I may will maybe skip this just to say that there are things that people liked. There are things mm -hmm. that they also still found quantum stuff being difficult, although we yeah. tried our best, but uh, hopefully we'll get more feedback from them maybe later yes and for the next well, obviously we would like to develop this course even more we would like to address the feedback that we got from this course to develop it better we also wanted to dive better into misconceptions of quant yeah. related to quantum physics especially when quantum is around us in so many places and we also want to take even better into account students various backgrounds and develop our mentor system even further. Yeah. And we also have like researcher point of view in this. So what if we would teach things in a different way next iteration? And what if we would teach different concepts, not for example, entanglement and superposition, but something else. And then if we would change somehow order of our teaching, well, not drastically, but in some way. So what, what would it give us? Would the produced games be different somehow or, this, or similar? W would it give some new ideas to people? Uh, would it change the amount of participants to our course? So we have like this research questions in mind as well. Yeah. And especially I'm interested, how would that translate into the games? But um, just cut it out. We really, really, really want to thank you for being here and I'll leave, leave this slide on. So if you want to contact us later and I noticed that a lot of people were interested in the course uh, and were asking if we had any funding or anything like that. We did for the first iteration. So now we're kind of like drastically, like it's free for the students, but like any resources, uh, any help, any people interested in organizing this, we would love to do this iteration more and more in the upcoming years. We have it in our curriculum for, for, for fall term. Uh, and then it's um, not anymore a master's level uh, course, but instead a bachelor's. So we might get more students from our universities, but also welcome others so we yeah. can contact yeah. us. <laughs> Yeah, of course. So we are interested in doing the, in organizing this course more, but we need also some resources and some help for doing so. Mm -hmm. And well, yeah, thank you. Please contact us, write to us in Discord, write to us via uh, email. So I'm from more educational side and Laura is from educational, quantum physics and game side. So yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. We have uh, time for a few questions. Uh, I think for uh, it's free of charge, you already said, you yeah, are looking yeah. funding, uh, maybe you can try once unitary found, if you haven't tried, yeah. I guess yeah. uh, it will be nice. Uh, Ludmila asks, what is the target audience, both course and games? Uh, well, the target audience is just 
you know, any students from physics, from game design side, programmers, also artists like musicians, visual artists, and anyone who is interested, because this is not that serious issue. You can make a game out of having zero experience of making games, and you don't need to make virtual game. You can make a physical game, like board game, card game, whatever. Okay, uh, Nasser asks, uh, <clears throat> any plans, ideas on turning some of these games into educational tools for university physics students? Well, actually, some of the games did have this as an idea. And uh, from this iteration and from earlier, I understood that the students themselves were interested in developing the games further. Um, if we have resources to, to help them do that, that would be amazing. We have always offered that they can contact us and we can like mentor and supervise them if they want to continue with the project. We're like happy to do that, but okay. I guess that's the answer. <laughs> okay, uh, John asks, uh, can you use the quantum games through a quantum cloud server? Uh, maybe they are asking uh, using some real machines maybe. Well, this year, uh, the games, um, they used uh, Gaskit at most. So if I remember correctly, this year's games didn't run on a quantum computer. We had James Wooden uh, in the last iteration help us. So uh, sadly, I can't remember if any of those particular games were running on a quantum computer. Like, But in previous, knowing the history of quantum games, there are games that Either they might source like like uh, a set for for I don't know a game setting or something like that from a quantum computer, but running on a quantum computer would mean basically if you don't own your own quantum computer, being on a queue. So games running on quantum computers are not that um, they are quite rare still because of practical reasons. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh uh, that there are more questions, but I direct them to Discord. There is already one long question also. Uh, thank yes, you very much. Uh, thank I you. see already people are waiting next editions. So yes. uh, let's Welcome. see. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you.